be hard to watch Sir Philip with someone who's not Eloise. I just think that's the way it's going to have to be. I think it just goes to show like how invested we are in these characters, in these books and in these stories, because you and I, I mean, we're in a group chat with Taz as well. And we have been just like gobbling up every single breadcrumb, every single, um, whether it's official or unofficial, every, anything that has to do with British in season two, we have been eating it up. We're so ready. We're so excited. We can't wait to watch this. And I think okay, seeing season one and how it was so well done, I'm so excited and I'm not nervous at all because um, the way that that story was told, it definitely did it justice. And so now that Kate and Anthony are finally like have a have a whole show to themselves as much as my imagination was great I can't wait to see it on screen I wholeheartedly agree I especially with Kate and Anthony I think their story like we said is so solid and there's really no faults I can only imagine what changes are going to be made to like make it better but I'm really excited because I think with Bridgerton is one of those shows where I'm not mad at the show's interpretations like you said where you know there's a lot of shows where we're always like oh the books are better da, da, da. but I think the books and the show have very different styles in the way they're portrayed in the way that they kind of come off even the characters themselves come off a little bit differently in the books in terms of their personality their core personality is still there but there's slight changes but I think it makes you love both of them individually for what they are and I think it's really hard for adaptations to do that so I'm really glad that Bridgerton is one of those and I just hope they don't muck it up because I will die <laughs> when I first saw Simone Ashley and specifically and this is sort of back to the idea of sound and how important it is um, how important a character's voice is to making the show her voice, uh, Simone's voice, is so, so beautiful. It is, it is, it's deep enough and it's, it, there's a little bit of, it's a little husky and it's a little, it's not necessarily, if you compare it to Daphne's voice, which is very feminine because that is her character. Um, Kate, I think, they, it was just spot on for me. Her, her in that role is so perfect because she, unlike her sister, like Edwina's character and Edwina's voice in the show, very docile, very gentle. And she's the youngest. She's very, you know, cute and innocent. And Kate is a little bit more mature. She's, you know, she has experience. She's a bit jaded. Life, um, you know, life hasn't been the easiest for her. Um, it's, it's not definitely, she's not in any type of way, you know, destitute, but she has a lot of emotional trauma and she is... I would say a much more intense character and this is why she matches Anthony's character so well because they have this burden and everything about that actress fits Kate so well um and I just I love it I think this is just sort of like a really absurd detail of mine but I loved her voice I loved how deep it is um yeah yeah, I just I can't wait. I can't wait for the show. It's going to be so much fun. I agree. Do you have any do you have any other predictions, anything just from the trailer itself um, of how the show might go? Season two specifically or like the show in general, like where it could go? Season two, but you can talk about the other ones because I can't remember if they've been guaranteed for three more or four seasons. Do you know off the top of your head? Because I did read somewhere that it's going to, I think, either season three or season four. And I remember getting excited because we get to see Benedict's story, but also Penelope's story. I think for now, the Bridgerton franchise has been guaranteed for four seasons. Um, yeah, so they're, they just, well, they've been renewed for season three and season four. Do you think that they'll go to uh, all the way to season eight, realistically? 
I, you know what's, the thing is, um, Eloise's story, Colin's story, and Francesca's story all happen at the same time, within months of each other. Um, I think, personally, I think within season three, so Benedict's story, Benedict and Sophie's story, I think you're going to see, because, um, Francesca gets married to John a couple months after Benedict and Sophie get married. So I think we're going to see Francesca and John as a side story in season three. So we see kind of um, how her and John were to set up for Michael and her story. I agree. I think there's going to be a crossover because... Um, to me, the first four books are heavier. They, there, there is a lot going on. Yeah. And the last sort of four books are less so. Um, they, they're very quick. I think I read them quite quickly and I think it is quite, I, it would make sense to me for them to have crossovers, maybe instead of eight episodes or so, maybe 10 episodes to kind of cover all that overlap. But yeah, I have a sneaking suspicion that there's going to be crossovers. Yeah, I, the thing is, the only thing that worries me is I want Eloise and Sir Philip selfishly to have their moment, um, completely, like, unobstructed by anyone else, um, and I just do you know don't what, though? know how they're gonna do that. I think, well, oh, sorry, go ahead. I don't think they will. I think the story works out better on paper because they are so alone, but in TV and how books are, you know, made into whether it's TV or movie, that is a lot of dead air of them just like walking around the house and walking around the garden. Yeah. Um, so there has to, um, unless they're going to include like side characters to fluff it up. But I think they're going to, for Eloise's story, there's going to be, um, again, some type of crossover. Again, the timeline isn't necessarily set in stone. So characters can come and go. Um, but I think I think there will be crossover because I, like I said before, I loved their story because they were so isolated. But when it comes to TV, characters who are isolated, yeah, it doesn't it doesn't carry a show very well. No, you're you're 100 percent right. You know, I think maybe it's going to be something like Francesca and John integrated with Sophie and Benedict story, like I said, season three. And I think during their um, season four, if they're doing like Penelope and Colin, you'll start to see like the um, the letters between Sir Philip and Eloise and kind of, you know, um, building their relationship that way. And then I think season five would have to be because Eloise and Francesca's story, they're both really isolated. Um, so I think they might do a mix of both of those and kind of show us back, like back mm-hmm. and forth. I think so too. And I think Eloise's story is already in motion when it comes to romancing Mr. Bridgerton. Like the story had already begun and I don't want to give it away, but it had already started. And so this sort of, again, proves or, you know, it it shows us in terms of like fans predicting that there will definitely be crossover because, like I said, the first four books, they they're sort of there's a lot happening. They can stand on their own. The last four, however, it seems that the author, a. Julie Quinn, has made it that they are in and out of each other's life in terms of like physical location. Not all the siblings are together at the same time. Eloise for certain isn't in her book. She's absolutely removed from the Bridgerton house. She's not there. She's not in like in the hustle and bustle of the London season. Um, And then, like you said, the other books, specifically like the last book on the way to the wedding, like Gregory, again, like for most of the book is attending to a friend. He is going to a wedding. He's spending time away from the Bridgerton clan. And so, they have to feature in each other's lives, but I think it's going to be a crossover, which I don't mind. I don't mind. Like, I think as long as we get, as long as I get Anthony's story, I am a okay. I'm sad. I will not be sad until I get Eloise and Sir Philip's story, but 
But I think the show has already started developing that story in a lot of ways. They've already laid a lot of the groundwork for that story. Mm -hmm. And I love the actor that they chose. I think even just looking at him and this, like the very minimal screen time that he's had, I think he's a perfect Sir Philip. Um, and I love him more. I him. agree. And I, I, I know that man that. is packing. Oh, I know his stroke room is going to be so freaking good. I literally cannot wait. <laughs> I can't wait. I'm so excited. I literally just can't wait. I think, honestly, anything they do, I really won't be disappointed because I think they've already made made it clear that they're staying true to kind of the core of these books and, uh, mm-hmm. um, and these characters, which I think any reader, that's all kind of all we care about in terms of adaptations. It's funny that you mentioned saying true because – on one of my TikTok videos, someone was like, oh, it's not historically accurate that there are characters who are black. And I'm just like, first of all, there is an abundance of period dramas where it is historically accurate, where it is a bunch of white people in a little village where it's just like white people attending the season. You, There are, you know, decades of period dramas where it's just white people. Which even that in and of itself isn't necessarily accurate because there were people of color in that time. Like there were POCs in London. There were, you know, they may not be in like the upper echelons of society, but there were, you know, people in the markets, people in like, obviously, unfortunately, they were part of like low income communities. But, you know, East Asians did exist. Black people did exist in those times. They just were chosen not to be represented in these TV shows. And I re- replied to one of the comments. I'm like, there is an abundance of shows. Go watch that. Like, go watch Pride and Prejudice. Every single Pride and Prejudice is just white people. Go watch every single, you know, Jane Austen adaptation or every go. Like, that is where you, if you want white people, that go there. Who cares? Like, okay, th- th- does it change the integrity of the story when Kate Sharma is Desi? No. No. <laughs> it doesn't not at all you, you you are right the story doesn't change the principles and the morals of these characters do not change the conflict is the, still the same whether she is you know whether Simon is black and and Kate is this like it, if, if anything it just makes it so much you know it's it makes it worth watching and I'm more interested in these characters you know success and their 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 lives because you know they look like me and they 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 live their lives like me but anyhow that was you're good i wholly heartedly Um, agree i also just to people like that i always ask like why are you so upset why are you mad because there's no reason to be mad like it just yeah it doesn't make sense people just like to complain to complain but it's fine because if you don't want to watch it don't freaking mm -hmm. watch it I promise you that the number one show yet again because it outsold every Mm -hmm. Netflix show ever. And it will do that yet again. I literally took the day off. Friday the 25th, I took the day off. I took (laughs) the whole day off. I'm so glad it comes out on a Friday because I don't have anything on a Friday. This is going to be amazing. I'm so excited. You, I'm The thing is, I'm going to watch it that Friday, okay. and then I'm going to rewatch it Saturday, and then I'm going to rewatch it Sunday. I already know myself. Thank you again, SJ, for joining me today. I have had so much fun talking to you and gushing with you about season two. I can't, I can't wait to watch the show. Um, where can people find you? Where can people follow you to, uh, you know, follow along with your amazing book racks? Okay. So first of all, thank you so much for having me. I had a blast. But you can find me at SJ Baby with four Ys. No one comment or ask me why that's my username because I have no answer for you. That's on TikTok and on Instagram, the exact same. I can't wait. I can't wait for this. Um, I love you. And I, uh, yeah. Okay. And on that note, I can't wait to watch season two of Vegetarian, which comes out March 25th. I am in no way affiliated to Vegetarian, of course, but Netflix, if you happen to hear this, uh, hit me up. Okay? Me too. <laughs> Bye.